Hello Outside Lives, I'm Ali, um, a sculpture artist and I run CuriousArty.com workshops for children and adults so please check out my website and social media uh, Today we are going to make a recycled automata oh, We're going to use some simple mechanics to make something move I love um, things that turn and um, surprises, they go up and down and um, we're going to work out how we can do that today. So we're going to use simple mechanics, we're going to use some creativity and we're going to use some um, recycled materials to do that. So you're going to have to look around your house. Uh, I'm going to explain in a minute what we need. A little bit more tricky using recycled materials um, but of course that means that we don't use up um, resources from the planet and we also have to get imaginative to look around the house and think, oh, maybe I could use this. I'm going to have an experiment and um, see if this will help make us a recycled automata. So this is one that I made. Um, this is a, a little turning one. So this one says curiousarty.com. You can put whatever picture you like on there. You could have your granny going round and round or your dog spinning in circles. So start um, having a think what you could put on your recycled automata. And this is another one that I did for a project with children all about um, plastic and uh, pollution. And I've got a little rubbish monster and he pops up from uh, above the dustbin. What a load of rubbish. So. We're going to have a go today to see if we can make things move. So what do we need to make our recycled automata? First thing is um, I'm going to use a tetra pack like this one. You could use an oblong one, that's absolutely fine. Um, if you don't use tetra packs then you need to find some sort of small box that you can cut out the front of. Uh, it needs to be just strong enough so that when you put the mechanics in um, that it will you know it can support the mechanics but I'm going to use a tetra pack like this and then we also need some bottle caps I've got milk bottle caps here um, you might have different ones different sizes you might need to experiment a little bit but uh, I love experimentation uh, but that's what we're going to use bottle caps and then you're also going to need Maybe you've got some old plastic straws that you no longer use um, that's sitting in the kitchen drawers. Something like that or an art straw. Or even um, if you look at your old pens that have run out. Um, I've got one here. And I've actually got a bit here of a pen. And it's basically what we, what we need is a little hollow tube that... Um, our turning shafts can can go down but move freely so I've got a skewer here that can fit inside there um, and it can move freely the other thing I might use is I've got the inside of a pen nib here um, so I also I just need something um, that can fit around there. I could also use for the inside part, maybe I've got an old paintbrush that oh, the ends got all scabby um, so I can't really use it anymore. I could maybe try that. Or a pencil that um, the lead keeps breaking so I can't really use it to draw but I could use it um, for one of my shafts. So I've got a tetra pack here that um, I've already prepared um, with some markings to help us. And what I'm going to do is um, cut off the bottom of this tetra pack. So I've measured 10 centimetres all the way round. Um, and then I'm going to use a really sharp craft knife. Um, you can do it with a, a pair of scissors if you've got really um, sharp scissors or if you make a, a hole first then you can cut round. But I personally I just find it easiest to do it with a craft knife. Obviously you do have to be really careful with these. So I've got my two halves. I'm going to use this um, flat half here. The top half um, I'm going to discard for the moment but you can use it to make automata. It's a little bit more tricky because um, 
it's just got this little hole at the top and what you have to do is um, sort of cover that little hole and then put the whole straw and, and shaft through there um, but that's what I've done on this one this is the, the plastic pollution one and I don't know if you can see there what I've done is made a little cardboard cover for the hole which I've then put the hole through so it's definitely possible. Um, I would have a go first maybe at this one because it's easier and then once you've got the hang of them um, you could use the top half to make automata as well. So I've got my bottom cut off 10 centimeters. I've also made a mark on both sides and that's halfway down so on mine it's five centimeters and halfway across three and a half centimeters so the same on both sides um, that measurement you do want to get pretty accurate it's going to help um, making your automata work obviously your tetra pack might be a different size uh, or you might have a little a little box and uh, what you're essentially trying to do is make a hole either side about halfway up and you're going to make sure that you don't want it too far to one side or the other because then your your cams when they turn might get um, stuck so that's why I've got mine in the middle so to make holes I tend to use these little brads these little awls um, but if you don't have anything like that you can do it with a, a sort of little screwdriver I also in workshops have these little screws which I put some tape around um, which also you can use so I'm just going to go through there And I'm probably going to have to make this hole a little bit bigger, um, but this gives us our, our basic hole. So I'm going to do the same on the other side. These are the holes. Um, here one, we've got one in construction here. This is our side holes um, for our bottom, our bottom turn, turning cam there. So that's those holes there. Also going to make a hole right in the, in the well, it was the bottom, now it's the top. Um, of my automata right in the center now a little bit more tricky this one um, because there's quite a lot of layers to go through so just be a bit careful with this one um, when you go into it so I'm just going to start that off Oops. it takes a little bit more time this one but you just sort of keep going so I've just gone all the way through here and I've also sort of tried to enlarge it a little bit and um, it depends what you use for your um, sort of bit of straw I've got to make sure that goes in there and um, we'll talk about it in a little bit if I'm using something like the little pen shaft I need to enlarge the hole to make sure that fits in but we'll leave that like that for now and um, what else I'm going to do is just cut out the front um, which is going to give us access to put in the mechanics you don't actually have to do this but it's quite fiddly um, it's quite fiddly to make everything work without that and it's also good to be able to see um, how your automata is working so I'm just going to use a craft knife again um, carefully cut down here okay so we have got our automata um, so this is the top we've got 10 centimeters um, cut down box we've got a hole either side halfway down halfway across there's the other one and we've also got the hole in the top so we're ready that's our, our, our framework we're ready to start building our automata so we're going to build an automata first that spins um, like my little one here and so to do that we are going to build first uh, the bottom shaft first so we're going to need a bottle cap and we're going to need something to make this rod here so we talked about that a bit earlier uh, a few different things you can use um, you could use a skewer if you've got any of those lying about I'm going to use the inside of a pen, a biro pen that's run out. Um, little twigs, they need to be quite straight but you could use those. 
um, what we talked about earlier you can maybe use a, an old paintbrush for this quite a thin one um, you need to make sure this is basically going to fit through the two holes either side so you're going to have to basically if I use the paintbrush I'm going to have to just enlarge those holes a little bit um, but I'm going to use something slightly thinner I'm going to use the um, the um, inside of the biro so we just check that that goes through there I'm going to have to just enlarge that hole a little bit on this side until a little bit more and that's the kind of <laughs> The joy and the frustration of using recycled materials, you know, we don't buy them uh, shop-bought, they're not ready-made, you have to fit them, but, um, you know, it's really good for kids to learn how to do this, it's good motor skills. Um, so I'm just going to check that that's going to go through like that. And my uh, first cam is going to fit on there, so I'm just going to take that off. And I need to put a hole in the middle uh, in the middle of the, the bottle cap. So I'm just going to again use my little brad but I could use a little, little screw with tape around there. I'm just going to push that through. I don't want to make it too big, I want it to just sort of fit through um, quite snugly. I'm also going to use some hot glue um, to glue that in place um, but I'm not going to do that just yet. But now, if I put that back through there, you'll see it starts to take shape. So we're going to make the vertical part of our um, spinning automata now. So for that I need another shaft. I'm going to use this bit of, um, I've got a little bit of skewer here. Um, but have a look around, see what you've got. It needs to be fairly thin um, and it needs to be quite straight. I've got some little twigs here. Um, they're fairly straight, if you can get one that's straight. I need another bottle cap and I've put a little hole um, just in the top of that. And I also need my, I'm going to use a little bit of straw that I've cut off and just enlarge the hole a little bit so that that can sort of snugly fit in um, and my little bit of wood can freely go up and down there. If I haven't got any old straws lying around, um, this is where you could have a look around. It's good to experiment. Um, this is a bit of an old biro, which if I take apart, I can see I've got a really good little um, hollow tube there which would also work and we might use that a bit later um, or I've got bits of old pen again that have, um, they don't work anymore I've cut one off there I'm just going to show you how to do that now I have a little saw here I even have a little little uh, bench hook which I use for workshops but you know you can do this um, you can just tape it down you don't need one of these but um, kids can do this so you're just going to turn that round a little bit and there I've got another um, little plastic tube and I'm, I'm just going to use some sandpaper and just sand off any little rough edges there so that's another option um, so I haven't got one answer for this um, because it is recycled materials um, but it's also about experimentation um, and seeing what works I, I love the process of how things work and I think it's really good for kids to learn um, why something doesn't work have an experiment with something else why does that one fit why does it not so this is a good time to have a look around your house um, and have a think what could you use and try different things and see which works best um, that's how you you know best way to learn I think so I'm going to put those out the way at the minute I'm going to go back to my little straw and if I slot that through there and I can move it up and down but it's, it's quite snug in there 
and I've also got my little um, piece of wood and if I put that through there it's going to move that up a bit I'm then going to with the flat side um, at the bottom I can then sort of squidge my um, little bit of wood through the hole I don't want to go too far quite tricky to get it to stay straight but we're going to hot glue that all on in a minute but this is essentially the idea of what it um, of what it is going to do once we've glued it all together so I have got um, my bit of straw or whatever I find my, found my little hollow tube I've made the hole big enough so it snugly fits in there I'm going to hot glue around there I want it to come through the bottom there but not too much uh, and I've made sure that whatever I'm using for this top shaft will freely slide in and out of there and I've also got my uh, bottle cap which I've made a little hole in and that's going to be my second um, my second can there so um, I'm just going to check my positioning of this um, this cam here on the rod and I've made sure that either end I've got um, sort of enough of the rod sticking out. I need to make a handle so one end I'm going to leave longer than the other. And then I'm just going to put some hot glue around the, around the hole there, around the fixing. And I'm just going to make sure I'm just going to hold it in place so that it dries um, quite vertically. Um, because they have a tendency these to sort of wobble and go off centre so I'm just going to hold that and position it get rid of the extra bits of glue and then um, got my straw through there I've just got it a little bit coming through the um, tetra pack at the bottom there not too much maybe a centimetre or so um, and I'm just going to hot glue that into place as well Round the top there, I'm going to put a fair bit of glue there just to keep that in place. And then I'm also going to I'm going to put my um, my vertical rod down through there through the straw, and I've got my second bottle cap. And it's got a little hole in there. I haven't made it very big. Um, I could just glue this um, vertical rod onto the second um, cam, the second bottle cap. But I found it makes it a little bit stronger if I, um, it's a little bit fiddly, but I've made a hole in there and if I just, it's quite a sort of snug hole, if I just, I'm not sure if you can see that there, I've just pushed that through a little bit. And what I'm going to do now is hot glue that on um, and like the other one, tends to be quite wobbly so I'm going to hot glue that on and sort of um, hold it <laughs> see that comes off quite easily at this point so I'm just going to slot that back on there just hold that while it dries I'm also just going to put a bit of hot glue in the top of there just to help with that because there's a lot of movement of this um, so we just really want to fix that on quite firmly. So I've just let that um, hot glue dry there and I've also stuck really quickly um, a picture on my automata so you can see. Normally I would wait and do this later but I've put a, an outside lives picture on there. And in theory our mechanism's working there so huh, we can make it turn but it doesn't always turn at this point. And that's all right. I kind of like that because we have to work out why. It's turning quite well there, but um, I don't think that's going to be consistent. And that's various things. One thing is we haven't finished the handle. So this, um, the bottom uh, shaft and cam are not fixed in place so that can slide off. There's also, because these are sort of recycled bottle caps, there's not enough weight on these. They're quite sort of flimsy really. So I don't have enough weight on the top here um, to push down really and keep a, a good connection 
So sometimes, if it's not working too well, I add a bit of weight into this top, um, into the top cam there, and um, I'm just going to add a pebble there. I've got bits of plaster. Sometimes I use old screws, um, and we just you just experiment with how much weight that you need. But that usually helps. Um, you can glue glue gun things in there if you want it to be permanent. That normally helps to make it more consistent. Another thing that I do, um, which one have I got it on? This one here is. I can add some sandpaper onto the bottom of this cam um, and if I wanted to actually round the edge of this one as well um, although that's got ridges on it so that normally helps to connect but if I put some sandpaper on there because they're really smooth the top of these um, that also helps with the connection so those are some things that you can try to improve the mechanics of your recycled automata. Um, we need to um, do some things to improve our, our um, automata. On my finished one here, I've got a handle, so I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And also on the other side, I need to put some glue and I need to fix something on so that um, the rod there can't slide out that way. So various ways that I could do that. Um, this one here, I've just made a simple little roll of paper, um, a bit like this, and I've just glued that around so it basically can't, it can't um, slide out that end. This one here is a bit more fun. I've put, um, I've added some circles and a twirly bit so that when um, the automata turns, you also get some extra movement on the end there. So um, I'm just going to do a simple one here. I've got a little strip of paper. I've put some glue on there. I don't really need hot glue for this, but um, I'm using some, some kind of Yoohoo glue there. And I've put some glue there and I'm just going to turn and turn that and wind it around. There are lots of different ways. You could put a bead on the end of this. Um, you basically just want something to stop um, the rod being able to come that end. So this is your stopper on the end, but obviously you can decorate it as much as you like. So I just need to hold that in place. Normally I would leave that for longer. Uh, I'm just going to add some extra little bits. I've got bits of old map here. Get rid of my pebbles, don't need those at the moment. And I've cut little strips off and we're going to make, I'm just going to fold some little zigzags that are going to create some extra movement for us. And I'm going to glue those on the end. Again, yeah, normally I would uh, leave this a bit longer, but I'm going to glue one on that side, hold it on. And I'm going to glue on the opposite way. You know, if you end up really liking automata, there's all sorts of things that you can do with um, this end section because it's another movement you've got there, so you could use it. So I've just got two little bits there, and if I turn, then I've got a nice little extra bit of movement on the end there. And most importantly, it's going to stop my rod from going out that end. So I've fixed in that end and on the other end I need to make my handle. So I've got various handles that I've done. Um, this one here for example, we I've made a roll of corrugated cardboard and I've stuck an extra bit of wood in the end um, and that makes the handle there. And this one here, oh, I enjoy decorating this one, so I've made a little handle here, I'll show you how to do this one. And again, I've got some extra bits of movement on this one. So I'll show you how that we do that one. So to make our handle, we could just turn it like this and that works. But if we make a handle, then that's going to uh, increase our turn and make it easier for us. So I've just got um, a bit of old corrugated card, which I've cut a little sort of 
petal shape out of, um, egg shape, pointy end. Could be a circle. Um, I've also got some old, this is an old um, children's book that was um, torn, so I've cut out the same shape um, in coloured paper. And I am just going to glue one either side of there. So I've just done this fairly quickly, but obviously you can go and find amazing pictures or draw your own. Um, put that on there. Um, and that's going to fit on the end of my rod. I'm going to put a little handle on the end. Before I do that, I'm going to add some extra bits. So I always have a little stash of um, bits of coloured paper. I've got some circles here. I'm going to find um, got some nice yellow cards. So I'm just going to cut out some triangles. Again, it's just to add to our bits of um, movement and interest. So you can decorate it however you like. So I'm just going to add a couple of little triangles on there. And um, this is going to fit on, you see I've, I'm using a pen nib for my rod there. And I need to make a little hole for that to go in. So again, I can use my little screw. I'm just going to kind of carefully, so this is in the fat end of my pebble. I'm making a little indent in there and that's where my the end of my rod my pen nib is going to fit in there I'm going to hot glue that on but before I do that and the opposite side so I'm going to turn it over side without the hole at the top at the sort of sharp end of this I'm going to make another little hole so I'm just going to Make that a little bigger and this is where I'm going to fit my handle. So to do that I'm going to use a little bit of twig. I'm going to cut that off the end. And that's going to be my handle. I need to make that a little bit bigger to do that because my twig is a bit bigger than that. So that needs to just slot into that hole a little bit like that. So that's my handle ready to go. I'm going to hot glue um, the little handle on there like that and I'm also going to use another strip of paper. Sometimes I like to leave things without being covered up. Let's just cut that down a bit. Um, it's quite nice to have the twig there. cut the end off but um, I like adding colour as well so we're just going to add a little bit of colour on there put some glue on this little rectangle of paper and again I'm going to wind it around the handle so I've got essentially two parts there I've got my circle or petal shape which I've cut out from corrugated card and I've decorated that um, obviously I can decorate it all at the end but it's a bit easier to do this before I fix it all together and then I've added my little handle and um, so I found something to do that with a little rod um, I could remember I was cutting things before with my saw I could cut bits off a bit of pencil find a little stick something to make my little handle there so I'm just going to let that dry a bit and on the other side Actually, I'm just going to glue that in for a little bit from that side as well. Obviously, you've got time at home. You can neaten all this up. Um, I think I'm just going to put a little circle on top of that glue there. Why not? And I've got my hole on that side um, for the pen nib, the end of the rod to, slit it, to fit in. So I am going to put some hot glue in there. And I'm just going to push that onto the end of my rod. So I need to leave that to dry now. 
have a little breather, leave that to dry, but that's essentially going to help us turn, that increases our turn, um, and we've got that part finished. So we've now finished our first automata, it spins round and round, I've added a little extra fringe here on my handle, uh, I've made that from an old uh, chocolate wrapper, um, and I can show you how to do that in part two. So we've got our spinning automata. Remember if it doesn't work we have a look at the mechanism, we might need to add some weight, add some sandpaper, um, check that our rods are all connecting, do some troubleshooting, do some experimenting, find some things around your house and make things turn. So this one spins round and round. Great! What we can do in part two for those who like, uh, who'd like to go a bit further, we're going to make one that spins but also goes up and down and we're going to make our own, well I've made here, I've made a Lucy who runs outside lives, we're going to make Lucy spin and go up and down. So for those of you who want to um, go a little bit further with your automata making, have a look at um, Recycled Automata Part 2.